The following is a presentation of SC State Athletics. To recognize head coach Buddy Pugh for his 21 years of coaching and congratulate him on his retirement after a phenomenal coaching career. The Delaware State University football team would like to present a signed football in hat. Congratulations, head coach Buddy Pugh. Coach Buddy Pugh, South Carolina State Bulldogs on the road this week in Alumni Stadium, Dover, Delaware, to take on the Delaware State Hornets. It's the first Mideastern Athletic Conference game of the season. The Hornets are coached by Lee Hall. They're having a tough time right now. They've only won one game this season, and last week they lost to Central Connecticut despite scoring 44 points. The Bulldogs, on the other hand, against Tennessee Tech, scored on the second play of the game, but were shut out the rest of the way. Can the Bulldogs offense score enough points to secure their first MEAC win of the season and spoil Dell State's homecoming? We're about to find out. Coming up next on the Buddy Pew Show. Snap back to court. Gives it to Alex on the right side. Alex bounces it outside of the corner. Turns the corner at the 45. At midfield. In the Morgan State territory. 25, 20, 15, 10. 45 and 50, 40 to 40, 35, 30, Johnny Dixon is 25, 20, 15, 10, Johnny Dixon 5, touchdown, Johnny Dixon, himself, Johnny Dixon, he's got wrapped up and gets him on the turf. Coach Spew, Delaware State, in the AC Open, it's like the season's starting all over again. It is, in a time you come up here though, it's always tough, then you add homecoming to it, you have, that makes it doubly tough, but at the same time, it gives us a better atmosphere. I'm hoping that they have a big crowd here today because it's more fun playing in front of folk than it is playing behind closed doors. This is a pretty good football team, Coach. They've got some athletes, got a young freshman quarterback that's come in, kind of established himself. They didn't win last time out, but they put a heck of a lot of points on the board. They did. They've been putting some points up here, and we've got to be on our P's and Q's that way, Ernest. We can't just think that we can go out and stop these guys. It won't happen. Now, We've got to play really good in the special teams games, too, because they're scoring points there, too. So, you know, it's a pretty safe bet that, that our offense is going to have to play good today for us to have an opportunity to win this football game. You talked about your offense. You got off to a, a massive start yeah. last week and then stumbled against Tennessee yeah. Tech. What were you able to work on, and what do you hope to accomplish well, uh, from the week of practice? Yeah, let's hope that we've got a little bit better idea about how to get, be more consistent offensively. And we're going to try to continue to be, we want to be a mostly a run first team and, and, and do those things that we can to mix it up in a way that we don't necessarily give guys such an easy opportunity to defend us. But we've got to throw the ball better and we've got to actually be able to run the football. We can't just go out and do one or the other. Coach, on the defensive side of the football team, what kind of, pro, what kind of problems do the Hornets present? Well, they, they are big. Uh, multiple split zone and, uh, and and all kinds of quick game kinds of uh, offense. They've got a nice little screen game. Those guys make a lot of big plays, a lot, lot of chunk yardage plays in the in the screen game and in the deep ball game. Now, they're an RPO team. They you know they play action and throw the ball on the, to to that tight end, the eight. They, they've got several receivers that, that that are really tough guys that you got to keep an eye on. So it's a little bit of everything. And then you add their running backs to it. You know, six uh, uh, Gillis and the and, and, and twenty four and twenty four both and and twenty four is such a good kick returner also until you got to be careful with all those guys you know in a way where you know where they are at at all times. Coach, not to get on individuals, but you got a guy that plays inside linebacker for you, an Aiden Weber, who's coming back to mm -hmm. Delaware State. How were you able to maybe you get any knowledge from him? I know it's a new coaching staff; they've changed a lot. But were you able to extrapolate anything from Aiden that might help you here today? You know what? We tried to talk to him a little bit, and, and he's got ideas. But it's a new it's, it's a new team. You know, a lot of the guys that were with him are no longer here, and their schemes are different. So, yeah, he knows their individual players, but at the same time, he doesn't really know much about what they're actually, you know, plan to do against us. All right, Coach, what's it going to take for you to get the first one of the MEAC season? Well, we better figure out how to make some points happen on offense. The big deal is, is being able to mix it up both offensively, you know, in a way where we can throw it and run it. And then last but not least, we got to take the run away from these guys on defense. All right, Coach, best of luck this afternoon. Thank you so much, Ernie. Empty backfield for Angelos. Here comes pressure. Angelos steps up in the pocket, throws, has it caught over the middle at about the 25-yard line at the 20, 15, 10, 5, down to the 5-yard line. Back to pass is Angelos on the right. He throws the slant. It's caught. Touchdown, Delaware State. 
So Delaware State on the slant from seven yards out. So it's 9 0 2 to go here in the first quarter. Our score is South Carolina State now. Trailing Delaware State 7 0. Long snap count. They give it to Tyler. Over the left side. Tyler cuts back to his right at the 25 at the 30. Tyler tackled down at the 35 yard line. But what a great run. 15 yards for Tyler Smith. Corey's in the shotgun. Two dogs are to the right. H back is to his left. Shotgun snap. Play action. Fake Corey looking long. Steps up in the pocket. Throws a long hands man out there. Jordan Smith Brown catches it at the 35 yard line. Down to the 34. That's a first down for the Bulldogs. Play action fake. Back to pass Corey. Throwing it out there. Got a man caught. That is Houston at about the eight-yard line. That's good enough for 17 yards and a first down for South Carolina State. Corey from the shotgun gives it to Juwan right up the middle. Juwan makes a man miss. Gets into the end zone for the score. So with 14-21 to go here in the first half, Bulldogs on the board. It's Delaware State 7, South Carolina State 7. Juwan Howe almost moved. They give it to Howe. Howe gets the first down and more at the 30, at the 25, at the 20, the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Juwan no. Howe. Oh, what a cutback by Howell. 311 to go here in the first half, Bill, in South Carolina State now with 14 unanswered. Angelos from the shotgun gives it uh, the sudden, sudden wrapped up, brought down, coming in, making a tackle for South Carolina State, Najon Barber. Shotgun formation for Corey. Here comes pressure. Corey back to pass. Corey looking, throwing short. He's got a man out there. This is uh, Justin Smith Brown at the 50, makes a man miss in the Delaware State territory at the 42 yard line with 31 seconds to go in the first half. There's a snap back to Corey looking down the field. He's looking left, throwing left, got a man out there. And it is over the shoulder, caught. Was oh, he, he in bounds? No, he, penalty marker down. They call it interference. Uh, well, no, they're going to call a late hit on Delaware State. They snap it back to Corey, gives it to Juwan. Juwan puts his head down. He's not going to be denied. Touchdown, and South Carolina State. South Carolina State now built with 21 unanswered points. Cobb will be kicking off, but I think it's going to be some kind of squib kick. I don't think he's going to give him a chance, and it is. Cobb. It's going to be, no, it's not filled by one of the guys. South Carolina State has the, the football with 12 seconds to go. No time went off the clock from the shotgun. There's a snap. Corey looking left. Corey throwing long. Got a man out there. Johnson is intercepted in the end zone. It was intended for Jordan Smith. Angelos takes a knee, and that's going to do it for the first half of play here at Dover, Delaware. Our score, South Carolina State 21, Delaware State 7. All right, Coach, it's funny how the Delaware State game started sort of like the Tennessee Tech game, and the Delaware State took the opening kickoff down and took it into the end zone. You're right. I told our team that at the half. I said, you know what? It looks like this is going to be just like the game the week before, except for, you know, opposite teams and uh, a lot better for us. When you start talking about Delaware State in that first drive, Coach, what went wrong from the standpoint? Because the reason I say what went wrong, they went down so easily, yeah. and then you stopped them cold as if you figured out what yeah. they were doing. I'm still a little bit concerned, though, because we seem to somehow or another get out of sorts within the passing game on defense. And they had a, a couple of C-regions where they got first downs, and I just didn't think they should have gotten them. But at the same time, they went down the field and scored, and then from that point on, we sort of got them stopped. Bulldogs opening kickoff down 7 nothing. Dell State goes up, and then, Coach, you turn loose the running game. You've been talking about it for months and hoping it comes around. Was it more the offensive line, more the running backs, or a combination of both? I think a little bit of both. Our running backs are beginning to figure it out a little bit. They know where the cuts are, and they don't necessarily get too far ahead of themselves. And then offensive line played better. Dallas Ford played better this weekend. He'd been kind of in and out, been kind of hurt and that kind of stuff. And we think we sort of kind of found a group that we can fit together and maybe kind of continue to develop. Hopefully we have. You start talking about this offensive line coach in Dallas Ford. Eric Brown did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Cam Liggins came on, played mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, Cam Johnson, mm -hmm. almost three backs with 100 yards. He had two with 100 yards, almost three with 100 yards. That was really fun to watch. And I'm hoping that we can continue to keep those guys healthy. Get them going to the point where you can depend on them to get pretty decent yardage most of the time. And at that point, then I think we got something to build on. Corey Fields had a pretty good day as well. But in the first half, the real star of the first half had to be Justin Smith-Brown. Eight catches for 120 yards all in the first half. He really changed the game, Coach, yeah. that opened the run game. Yeah, up. he's gotten to be a big play guy for us now. And, you know, he's the guy that we can depend on to make – you know, some of the big runs and that kind of stuff within the screen game. But, you know, he got a little banged up toward the, I think, end of the third quarter in there somewhere. And, 
you know, from that point on, you know, I was kind of the dumps a little bit because he really has been a good player for us. It was neat to see the team kind of get in sync with you, Coach, because late in the end of the first half, we had an opportunity to put points on the world. We thought it was a possibility, but it was a real possibility. The team kept playing. You scored with a minute 31 uh -huh. and all another opportunity right yeah. before half to get some more points. Yeah, we did. We got another drive and got it in. And at that point, we actually got it back again uh, with about 25 seconds, I think, to go in the, in, in the half. But didn't quite make that one happen. But I tell you what, it was fun to watch us try to make it come together that way. Bulldogs leading at the end of the first half. We'll take time out here on the Buddy Pugh Show. We'll come back with more after these messages. All right, this is time for the Prisma Health Injury Report on this edition of the Buddy Pugh Show for the Delaware State game. And coach, unfortunately, you play a physical game. Injuries come as a part of the game and we got kind of banged up. Yeah, we did get some guys hurt, some uh, Justin Smith-Brown was down with an ankle. He's been suffering with that ankle pretty much all season, kind of on and off, and it kind of went off on him again. Um, we had a little bit of a deal with our punter, uh, Max Cobb. He's got a little bit of an oblique pull, and he had a heck of a game going, too, so I, I really couldn't quite figure out exactly you know, when that happened. Uh, uh, Jablonski Green played with that, with that club hand. That seems to be coming along pretty nicely. You saw talking about this team. An important time of the season is from the standpoint of injuries, and you need to be healthy as we get ready for the next stretch. But also, it's that time of the Buddy Pete Show where we do the Sack to Give Back food line. Sponsors a 1,000 meals to needy families in the Orangeburg and South Carolina. Every time we get a sack, and boy, Coach, we got some sacks in this one. And one kid got a sack, was back home, I shouldn't say exactly. home, in, in Delaware State, but it was good to see Aiden Weber get a sack against his old I'm team. I'm sure he and his old family were excited to see him get a Sack. It was down in a kind of a crucial situation. Quarterback was sprinting out. And he ran him down and got a tackle that way. Uh, uh, Jablonski Green got a sack uh, with, with a club hand, which is, you know, really kind of special for him. I think he enjoys being outside a little bit more. We've been playing him more inside, but he did get a chance to get, you know, in there and get a big play. And, you know, I beat him up a little bit because he got to do that little dance deal when he <laughs> – but at the same time, you do, we do enjoy seeing those guys get excited about getting a sack. And then Juan Barber, uh, one of our defensive tackles from up in uh, Ridgeview High School in Columbia, South Carolina, has gotten a, a, a sack or two. So he got one that, that game, and he's always fun to watch too. So I'm excited for our guys. I think we got at least three. Maybe we maybe have gotten a mo another one, but I think we got at least three. The Bulldogs get food line to give some sacks to give back to our needy families in the South Carolina and the Orangeburg communities with a thousand meals going out to every time somebody gets a sack for South Carolina State. We'll take a time out. Here on the Buddy Pugh Show, we'll come back and talk about the second half. Bulldogs and Hornets, it was homecoming at Delaware State. We'll be back with more right after these messages. High end over end kick is going to be, oh, this is, Simmons drops the football at the 10-yard line. Tim Simmons at the 15, and Simmons is hit hard at about the 17-yard line. Corey gives it to Juwan over the left side. Juwan turns the corner at the 30, at the 30 across up to the 35-yard line. That's a pickup of 12, and that's a bulldog first down. They hand off to Tyler Smith, cuts back right. Tyler lost the football. It's recovered by Delaware State. Tyler got stripped. Delaware State comes up with the turnover. Third down and 10 from the 47-yard line. Back to pass. Angelos is going to be sacked, brought down at about the 45-yard line. Corey Field sells in at quarterback, gives it to, Ty to Tyler. Tyler across the line of scrimmage at the 25. Tyler 20, 15, 10. Tyler's number five, reaches for the goal line. Did he get there? No. It's going to come up <laughs> one yard shy of the goal line. 21-7, looking for more. They give it to Josh. Josh puts his head down, gets in easily. Josh Shaw with the touchdown with 5.55 to go here in the third quarter. It's Bulldogs 28, Delaware State 7. Back deep is Rakeem Smith for Delaware State. End over and kick. Rakeem Smith's going to have an opportunity. He comes out of the end zone two yards deep, and he is hit hard. My goodness. Angelos gives it to Gillis, trying to get outside. Gillis, Jaden Jones with a beat on him. Jones pulls him down. What a man tackle wow. by Jaden Jones at back of the 31-yard line. Now in motion for Keem Smith. They give it to him on the little end of the round. Smith trying to get outside. Wrapped up, can't go anywhere. Bulldogs have him corralled back at the 46. All in motion. Angelos in trouble. Knocked down. Sack. Aiden Weber gets the sack against Delaware State all the way back at the 17-yard line. Toe is in it. It is up, and that it is, is no good. My goodness. 
They give it to Josh Shaw over the right side. Josh got blockers in front of him, turns the corner to the right, gets uh, at the 30 at the 35. Josh Shaw up the field. Eric snaps it back to him, back to pass, looking left. Corey throws it out there, caught. First down, Jordan Smith. They snap it back to Corey. They give it to Tyler. Tyler up the middle at the 35, at the 30, 25, 20. You won't catch him. 10, 5, touchdown, Tyler Smith, 43 yards out. And we've been waiting for that, and he finally broke one. So with 8.52 to go, it's South Carolina State 35, Delaware State 7. Gavin kicks it high. Kind of a sky kick. It's going to be fielded by one of the up men at about the 28-yard line. And, boy, what a hit. Back to pass. Angelos looking long. His wrap knocked down. What a sack to give back for the Bulldogs. And was that Jablonski Green? That yes, was Jablonski that, Green. That was Jablonski Green. 4.15 to go in the game. Andre back to pass, gives it to Josh over the left side. Josh cuts back at the 40 at the 35. Still on his feet at the 30 at the 25, 20. Josh cuts back at the 15, down to the 15, 14 yard line. A final score, South Carolina State 35, Delaware State 7. All right, we begin the second half, Coach. You begin with possession. <coughs> Unfortunately, uh, one of the few times we had a couple boo-boos on that, but we were moving the football. You know, those two drives were back-to-back. -back. We had an uh, interception on the last play of the first half and then we go into the second half and, and get a drive going. Thought we were in great shape. Uh, Tyler Smith was uh, really carrying the ball in a way where, you know, we thought he's getting ready to get some big yards. The ball slipped out of his hand and they get it back. So it was a little bit disappointing, but at the same time, our, de our, our defense did a nice job of getting a stop and getting us the football back. You know, you're talking about your defense. Delaware State got the football, moved it down the field, looked like Delaware State on that first possession, Coach. They got all the way down to the goal line, and that was when Aiden Weber came up with, with his sack on that drive, and they ended up getting nothing out of it after attempting a field goal. Yeah, that was a, a, a good stop for us on defense that way. And from there, we got the football and moved it back down the field and, and uh, you know, made some nice gains on it. So. You can tell that this team is beginning to find its way a little bit offensively. I'm excited about what we see going into the uh, next game, so I'm looking forward to seeing that we can put it together now consistently <laughs> on a regular basis. And you start talking about it, Coach. It goes back to the offensive line and talking about you controlling the second half. You really start to stack up the yardage because there was really nothing Delaware State could do as long as you kept it on the ground and you kept it on the ground. You're, you're exactly right. Our tight ends uh, uh, both uh, had, had nice games. Uh, Khalid Ellis – uh, did a nice job of blocking for some of the, you know, hard backside zone plays. And then Keisha Antone did a nice job. So both those guys, I thought, really played well today. They didn't catch many, very many balls, but I'd much rather see them block anyway. I tell them, you just big offensive linemen, little, little offensive linemen, I guess, maybe. At the same time, I would like to see those guys, you know, continue to come on and make, you know, the run game really go for us. All right, the Bulldogs get the win over Delaware State, the first win of the MEAC season, 35-7. to Up next, the Bulldogs take on. North Carolina Central. It's a short week. We'll tell you about it when we come back on this edition of the Buddy Pugh Show. All right, welcome back to the Buddy Pugh Show. Bulldog take on North Carolina Central. It is a Thursday night. Folks, it's on ESPN primetime. But, Coach, Thursday night weeks are tough. Mm -hmm. We're running right now to get back into our office to get started preparing for North Carolina Central. Had a little bit of an opportunity to do a little bit in the past, but at the same time, they played on Thursday, get a little bit of a head start on us. We got to get in there and catch up, and we'll practice tomorrow, Sunday. And uh, from there, then we'll go on and see if we can make the week come together in a way where we can be prepared to go up there on Wednesday and play on Thursday. Now, you know, the thing about this game, Coach, in years past, we put a lot on this game and made it seem like it could decide the uh, MEAC championship. North Carolina Central proved last year that you don't have to win this game and you can still win the championship, so perhaps that changes everybody's attitude going into this game. Well, I wouldn't want to try to win it without winning this game. I can tell you that, so I can tell you that the whole thing goes through Durham, North Carolina, and we got to get our fans up there and get after these guys' butts. Now, if it doesn't happen that way, then I can tell you, I don't, you know, I don't think you got to a snowball's chance of making it happen. So right now, we think that we got to get in there and beat North Carolina Central to have an opportunity to go to Celebration Bowl. Coach, tell me about Trey Oliver now, who's been, been at North Carolina Central for a few years. They don't have what they do. It's Mookie Collier and Davius Richard. They're going to run the read option, and you got to figure out a way to stop it. Quarterback and running back, you know, are the key to their offensive scheme. They do a great job of, of really driving the football there. 
offensive line coach Cedric Williams is an ex-game cock. He played for us from down to James Island, South Carolina. We really think that those guys have done a fantastic job of putting this team together. They're good on defense. They really do a good job of, of, of beating you up with their defensive front. Those guys have, have, have really come on and developed a, a group of guys that you can really – you know, think that can be the, the maybe the best defensive front in this league in some time. So, you know, this is really going to be a big challenge for us. But I think we up to the challenge. And I'm looking forward to seeing just what we can do to match up with these guys this coming Thursday evening. As much as North Carolina Central won the MEAC last year, Coach, they've had a difficult time with South Carolina State. You seem to have found whatever it is it takes to get past them. What will it take for you to be, to be able to do it again this <laughs> well, year? Well, I don't know if I can – you know, if we can or not, may come up with a scheme that actually taught these guys. And, I, you know, the last thing we're looking for is to make these guys mad because I can tell you that they are really, really good. And uh, they're an experienced football team. You know, you saw them last year against Dion in the uh, Celebration Bowl. They had a fantastic plan and they had all kinds of, of, of great fakes and, 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 uh, and trick plays and all kinds of stuff along with the fact that they can knock it down your throat too. So they got a little bit of everything on this team, and they play great defense. Their kicking game's good. I'm looking forward to the game, but at the same time, it'll be a tough, tough matchup for us. Folks, we're looking forward to it. This Thursday night, the game's going to be on national television on ESPN. And of course, we're looking forward to seeing you up in Durham, North Carolina, when the Bulldogs take on North Carolina Central. And, of course, next week, right here on Watch Fox 57 on the Buddy Pew Show.